Hi, my name is Winslet, and welcome to my Celestian Doctrine tier list. At the beginning of April, I posted my complete Doctrine tier list, which looks like this. And today, I'm going to be going into why I placed each Celestian Doctrine where I did. While I expect that future expansions and patches will change how good some of these doctrines are and add a few others, the doctrines kept the values that they had when the game first launched up until the Tyrannosaurus patch, so for about 9 months, and I expect that these numbers will stay the same for a while now. Even if they do change, I think that these tier lists that I have prepared will remain useful, especially to new players who just want to get a general idea as to what is a good doctrine to take when and why. There are 97 doctrines that I could find in the game and while I would love to talk about each of them in one long video, I decided to break them into smaller, more digestible segments like this one. The first doctrine we're going to talk about here is Karmaic Amplification, which is in the A tier because it is one of my favorite doctrines, like out of all of them. It's almost in the S tier, but I think that it is slightly worse than a lot of the ones that I did put in the S tier, and I wanted to make sure I, I put the ones that I thought were really, really, really good off by themselves, and I could see why some people wouldn't like this one and would say it's actually pretty awful, and that's because I think um, those players play very aggressively with the NPC factions, and I'm generally a pretty peaceful player who likes to do quests for them, and... Uh, yeah, before I talk too much about this, I think we should probably pull up the numbers associated with karmic or karmaic amplification. And we're going to do that by hopping over to the game like this, and then going over to the Imperial Archives to look it up. So this says that the cooldown for requesting a new quest is um, reduced by one turn, and while active factions will make demands at a slower rate. I know a lot of people that hate doing um, befriending two or more NPC factions really, really hate it because of the demands. They always ask for a lot of energy or a lot of Cosmite, and that means that you can't either build a um, colony if you want to try and get a colony going, or you won't be able to mod out some units if you really want to mod out some units. But by having this, it becomes really insignificant what they ask for you. I think the rewards that you get from quests outweigh the demands, uh, and that's an aspect that people generally overlook a lot. And uh, one of the things that really is a bummer if you like questing is having to wait for them to come up, and being able to just get them more often means that if there's one you don't like, you can deny it, and it's not as big of a deal. You'll get another one pretty soon. And if it is, you'll just get favor that much faster. You'll be able to integrate things that much faster. And uh, that's just that's how I like to play. Before we move on to the next one, the next doctrine, let's uh, pull up the completed full doctrine tier list, however you want to call it, and um, see what we have next to karmic amplification. We have hearts and minds to the right of it. Hearts of Minds are slightly worse, and to the left of it, I think we have Native Displacement Act, so let's actually pull those up um, in the Imperial Archives to compare those numbers. So this makes it easier to quest, and so those factions are nicer to you. Um, hearts and Minds makes it so that you get more influence from questing, and in addition, Absorbing Colonies is three turns faster. This actually pairs really, really nicely with the the um, doctrine we were just talking about, I've forgotten what it's called already, um, Karmic Amplification, because they're both for questing. If you're if you're like questing, um, you'll get lots of influence from this one, and you'll be able to get that influence more often with uh, the reduction in quests and how often you get quests in um, Karmic Amplification. They're both relatively affordable and something that I would recommend you look into, but I think this one's just slightly less good because of um, the benefits you get out of completing quests. 
um, you want to be able to get all those lump sum things and just getting 50 percent more influence isn't comparable to the giant amount of energy or researcher units that you would get from just completing the quests um, so yeah i think we can now talk about the one that's slightly better which is native displacement acts i love using that one because you don't have to fight the enemy you can uh, buy them off and play friendly instead of attacking everything and uh, also you only need one unit to do this you can send a scout over to get the benefits from a location which if you have the um, scavenger doctrine for the assembly or the the background which gives you an, a boost to clearing out sites this could be a very nice thing to combine with that because yeah you'll be able to get those resources pretty affordably um, you'll probably get more energy out of that than you would spending your influence on other things um, maybe maybe you would get more if you steal it using covert ops but that's risky it's not my favorite way to play okay so I think we're ready now to talk about the next doctrine in the Celestian Doctrine tier list, which is Missionary Negotiators. I don't know what that is off the top of my head, so we have to go back to this and find out what Missionary Negotiators does. So the cost of bribing NPC faction stacks is reduced by 20%, and the cost of items you can buy from dwellings is reduced by 20%. It's similar to the Native Displacement Acts. Um, in that it can make it easier to buy things off of locations. I love those kind of things. Uh, but it's, it's pretty late game uh, tech to be reducing the cost that it takes to move things. It, tier 7 tech means that you probably won't get it until relatively late in the game, and at that point there won't be many stacks left to push off of things. Um, I think this can make buying a uh, or annexing a dwelling cheaper. But I can't guarantee that. I think it does. It does make the items that you buy from those dwellings a lot cheaper, and that can be really, really, really nice if you're going for um, integration uh, tier and getting those tier four units as 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 quickly as possible and as many of them as possible. I, I really do think pumping those out as early as possible is is one of the best ways to guarantee that you're going to win. Uh, but other people obviously will try and rush you before you you can do that so it's not necessarily the best strategy against human players pretty fun one against the ai i i have to say i really enjoy doing that against the ai it does have a uh, limited amount of benefit you can get because there are other things that reduce the cost that you get at those places it says you can't reduce it more than 50 percent but i think i think this will have an impact in most situations now let's see what we have around it we have a complete thing here, and that one is right after a landmark thing, the spaceport one, and right before a empire quest. Okay, so let's go back to here and look up the spaceport thing. Mm, I can spell spaceport. So this is slightly better. Being able to have cheaper tactical operations means that you'll be able to um, worry about running out of energy less. I think that uh, getting this attached to your empire can be really, really tricky to do, but the value that you get out of it is quite nice um, in terms of just the, the energy that you save in tactical operations. Being able to use the tactical operation in your first turn of combat is pretty insignificant. but I could see why you would think this could be better than uh, uh, missionary negotiators and just uh, out of the pure potential that you can get out of um, the two I think you can save more energy here than you would uh, get more units out of this but it's arguable I think you if you get this early enough this is very very nice and uh, yeah if you get this early enough it's it's pretty nice but this one might be better if you can get it early enough and um, let's see what was off to the the right of it again it was an Empire quest it is 
that one with the hand. Okay, let's go find our Empire Quest with the hand up. There, em Emissary, I think it was. This one will make it so that you get more influence from your quests. Um, I think, you know, getting more influence will allow you to buy more units and stuff, but having that reduction is slightly better. Oh, it disappeared. It was, was it missionary? Yeah, missionary was, it reduces the cost of buying things. So this, I think, can save you more money if you're already at that discount limit then I think you could argue that emissary is better but um, this one just feels better in general when you look at the numbers and you compare them now I think we're ready to move on to our next doctrine in the Celestian list which is celestial judgment ah yes I like this one I think it can be pretty good if you invest in it enough but it's arguable now, let's go back to in-game and pull up Celestial Judgment. Oops, that's not the one. This was, this doctrine will allow you to do 10% extra damage against non-enlightened units. A lot of doctrines that are like this will give you something extra on top of that 10% damage. It is pretty easy to apply it to get your units to be enlightened using mods or hiring your secret tech units to just come with it. But um, and the fact that you don't get anything on top of it, I think, makes it one of the less competitive ones, one of the ones that you can invest less in synergy. Like Bio Crusader, for example, gives your, your melee units something extra on top of the 10% damage they can't do. They can get Frenzy, which increases their damage potential on, on uh, melee units so um, while you could argue this one gets better with synergy I think it doesn't get good enough to be labeled as something that gets much better with synergy although I would understand if you if you uh, felt that way I think that's a very reasonable um, instinct or intuition now let's compare this to what we have next to it in my complete tier list I think Yes, it's not being covered. So it's slightly better than Deep Infiltration and slightly worse than the Technoclast Crusade. So let's pull those up in game. Deep Infiltration. Requires that you put a Covert Op or use a Covert Op to get Infiltration to do plus 20% damage. I think that while it is nicer to have that plus 20% extra damage, the fact that you have to infiltrate a player is a harder condition to fulfill than enlightening your own units. Um, so that's why I put it as slightly worse than Celestial um, Judgment. It's just harder to get going, to get that advantage at all. Of course, it is It is quite nice if you can get it going, but I think if you're playing against the harder difficulty AIs, it's not going to really give you that bonus damage that you need when you need it. It is tier 9 tech, so it's going to take a while to unlock. and it just seems like something that I personally wouldn't go for, but I know other people really, really do like Covert Ops, and uh, the benefits that come with infiltrating a player um, will, will probably pair nicely with this as well. Okay, so I think the other one to the left of it was one of the Crusade ones. So we'll go to, yeah, this one. This says if you're fighting against mechanical and integrated units, all your friendly units will do extra damage, um, which is a pretty easy condition to fulfill. But that say you're going against Kirko, uh, Xenoplague, they, and they don't have any NPC units, then you're not going to be fighting mechanical or integrated units, and you won't get that extra 10% damage. It's just um, it's slightly harder to apply, but then again. You get this little extra effect, uh, and every once in a while you'll just run into a mechanical or integrated unit, which you can you can get that damage uh, against, and you don't have to do any modding. the The modding is kind of a pain um, with the Celestial Judgment, just to get your guys to be enlightened. Uh, but I, I do think there is a hero skill that that makes them enlightened without it. Anyways, is that the best use of your skills? I don't know. You'll probably be spending your skill points on other things and getting more value out of it. 
think we're ready to move on to the next one in my Celestian tier list, which is Harmonious Existence down all the way in D tier. It can't be that good, right? All right, so Harmonious Existence. Yeah. This one will make it so that each of your colonies that's not of your starting race will give you extra relations with that race and your colonies will have plus six um, happiness. If you can get, I think it was 400 race relations and you're at the virtuous um, reputation, then you can grab those independent settlements for free. You don't have to spend influence. I know if you're at virtuous and you have the, or if you're not at virtuous and you're at the highest level of race relations adored, I think that's 600 and above, then they'll, they'll join you for free. So this can be a good way to make it so that you can pick up things for free. But the fact of the matter is that you're going to be getting that very late in the game. It's a high accessibility doctrine, a tier seven doctrine. So that doesn't, that means you probably won't be able to pick up the ones that start off independent at the beginning of the game. You'll only really be able to use the some things that are left over by players who get knocked out when they're they get knocked out. Sometimes their settlements become settlements, or sometimes their their colonies become independent settlements. But usually people pick them up pretty quickly. So this is just like not very good at all. Um, extra six happiness does do something, so it's not completely worthless, but it's definitely not worth 200 energy in my opinion it's it's pretty awful um so yeah i think we can compare this to what's around it now and it's got siren's canticle off to the right and uh one of the landmark things to the left of it and i don't know what that one is off the top of my head just give me two seconds to pull it up and i should be able to figure that out pretty easily. Where'd it go? No, it's underneath this. There it is. So that one is uh, cryo repopulation protocols, I think. No, it's the propaganda networks. Let's go pull up propaganda networks. Yeah, there we go. So this will give you extra relations with all races and extra reputation, which is similar to the uh, other one, but it just gives you a base, which I think will actually <laughs> give you more than um, the, this thing here. Just having plus 100 race relations with everything based on the, the number of colonies that you have of that race is it probably means that you won't get um, plus 200 relations with most of the races. You'll probably get it with like one or two of your, your things. Um, your, you know, one or two of your colonies that aren't of your starting race. And that means, yeah, you'll just get more race relations out of this. And the benefits are pretty nice. I think they reduce like your, your upkeep and stuff and the amount of happiness it takes to get happiness events if you, you have good race relations. And uh, Siren's Canticle. Slightly worse, defies six happiness like the other one, gives you a little bit of morale when fighting within your territory. That morale is very hard to get to be applied in a fight. Uh, you have to beat people into your territory to do that versus the other thing that we we're just looking at. Harmonious existence, it, it gives you that race relations, which I think will give you more potentially than a uh, Siren's Canticle. Of course, Siren's Canticle is pretty cheap compared to the other one, and you can get it through an NPC, so it's pretty accessible if you have the influence for it. So, I don't know. You, you may want to keep that in mind when weighing them to, those two things against each other. Regardless, they're both in D tier, so I don't know. Maybe just don't take either of them. <laughs> Alright, so our last doctrine we're going to talk about is... Um, oops, I forgot to put this away so we could show things off. Oh well, you, you know what I was trying to say. Tyrant's Canticle, bad. Um, propaganda Network, good. And that's now find Distinctive Prayers. Distinctive Prayers are pretty bad. 
They're awful, actually. They make it so that marauders no longer attack your colonies, and they do not trespass in your domain. I would never take that, because when they come into your territory, you can kill them for um, resources. If you have something that gives you research for every enemy killed, I think the assembly have that. You can get a lot of nice research out of that. It's not that hard to build up your defenses to be able to take them on. The marauders, even on the hardest settings, you just keep going up and up and up, and by the time the marauders get to you, your defenses should be strong enough to take them on without any losses. Um, there's nothing worse than this. This is my least favorite one. It's just, yeah, it takes away from your economy instead of adding to it. So why would you want it? I just don't see it. There's only one thing to the left of it. That's an empire quest. It's one of the worst doctrines, but we can just pull it up really quickly to compare it to this one. It is Diplomat. So what does Diplomat do? Just gives you a hundred opinion with all the other players. I guess I could be slightly more useful than not having Marauders attacking you, but I don't know. They're both pretty awful. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to say on this tier list. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe. I'll see you around.